It is Friday, November 11th, and this is update number 14. Um, the job is still working out at Napa. Uh, finally, I, I got that kind of squared away. We were able to get insurance squared away. We have good insurance through the state. That whole thing with the five-year-old having to go to the ER and those bills, we actually ended up with a second 400 some odd dollar bill, but both of them got resubmitted to the new insurance and they took care of them. Praise the Lord for that because I wasn't sure where we were going to come up with 800 and whatever dollars that was. Uh, now that I have decent health insurance, or actually it's pretty good health insurance, um, I would have been into a doctor to talk about migraines and dyslexia. Uh, the problem with the dyslexia is that treatment is several several thousands of dollars and there's zero insurance coverage so I'm kind of on my own trying to figure that one out um, the migraines I started with uh, Sumatriptan or aka Emetrex and that is a, a, a take when you're starting to get a migraine to kind of knock it out kind of thing and it helped I guess it kind of dulled the pain. It didn't really get rid of anything, but it just dulled it. But it made me a little more exhausted, which was one of the things I'm trying to get rid of in the first place. And it made me really dizzy. I wasn't able to take it if I was going to work or doing anything because I, I take it in, during work or at work or before when I was going into work. And then I'd be staggering around work. Uh, didn't feel safe climbing stairs. Didn't feel safe spinning in a circle to turn around and go another direction. I just didn't feel safe taking this stuff it's because of the dizziness. So I didn't refill my prescription on that. I went back to the doctor about a month later. And we talked about that. And he started me on another medication, a preventative once a day, just kind of a preventative medication. Uh, where's it at called amitriptyline uh, five milligrams yeah five milligrams I think what they are maybe ten milligrams I don't remember what the dosage is exactly uh, I started out taking one at night and then every night and it seems to help I have found that while I do still feel like migraines coming on I can handle them with over-the-counter medications a lot better and I'm also not quite as exhausted as I have been and it's it's still difficult because I don't know if this is the meds working or if it's just the way things are in Minnesota and me and migraines because I haven't been here even a full year yet so I don't know how to really compare migraines in Minnesota to migraines in Michigan but I was told to go from one pill a night up to two uh, after roughly two weeks, so I'm gonna do that, and we're gonna see how the two pills pan out. But it seems to be helping. I am able to stay up a lot later at night. Um, I before I would like get home from work, I would sit down and like within an hour I would just be passing out. I would just exhausted, constantly, just never ending. I don't do that anymore. I sit down. I can function a little, much better. I can interact with my family. I can come downstairs, take care of the dog after I put the five-year-old to sleep and get the rest of the family to sleep. And I can sit and I can stay up till down here until you know 11, 12 o'clock, which is fantastic from a studying standpoint. That's kind of one of my goals. I need to get to a point where I can stay up at night until you know midnight, one o'clock for studying, and still be able to get up at you know. 6 6 30 in the morning to be able to study before I go to work so it's taken me a while to get this far but there was a lot of uh, a lot of bits and pieces that needed to fall into place um, I have the uh, the various alphabets of uh, the Greek and the Hebrew I can memorize to the point where I can recite them I've gotten that far now that I'm able to you know start staying up later at night and can actually find time to study I can start moving on to the next step of this, which is actually being able to hand write out the Hebrew alphabet and the Greek alphabet, both lower and uppercase. Once I can get those written out, um, 
I should be able to start doing flashcards and better character recognition so that I, you know, I know the characters, what they are, when I see them. And once that's done, we'll move into trying to pronounce these things and figuring out how to, you know, actually read the stuff and pronounce words. Um, the current goal is to work on this until the beginning of, uh, the beginning of May. I would like to know whether I feel that I'm going to be able to continue on by May 1st. Um, the idea behind that is that I don't want to, you know, wait until just before school and be like, no, I'm not going to be able to do this. And then, you know, leave my landlords without a renter. That's going to inhibit another second career family from being able to move into here. And if they can't rent to a second career family, they'll probably have to rent to another family, which is going to completely inhibit this place from being a second career family home. And I don't want to do that. I want to make sure that if I'm not going to be able to finish this and I'm not going to be able to go back, that I get out of here in time so that they can move another second career family in here and we can try to keep this thing open for second career families. Um, I also don't want to get, you know, through a first semester at school and be like, nah, I can't do this anymore and then, you know, just and leave then because A, you don't want to be trying to move in December. It's going to be real snowy and nasty. And B, I don't want to just dump a house and utilities back on my landlord so that they have to keep and pay for heat and all that. Um, so May 1st is kind of my uh, my cutoff date. I either decide then that we're going to stay or I decide then that we're going to go back to Michigan. And if we stay, then that's staying and I'm going to push through it for the next two years. Uh, so that's kind of where I'm at. That's, uh, that's my cutoff date there. Either we leave or we stay and we go through it. Um, other than that, we've... Uh, We've still all just been sick on and off. There's at least one sick person in my house. It's been it's been a little hectic as far as health is concerned. I don't know what the deal is, but ever since August hit, we've just been sick, one or two people at all times. It's 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 getting old. Um, I don't think there's much else to say right now. I will get back with another one of these videos. Uh, oh, next time I see my doctor will be I think in January. We're supposed to see how the amitriptyline is doing, and then we're going to discuss a replacement for the Emitrex, something that hopefully won't make me so dizzy if I feel that I need it. But if the amitriptyline is actually working, then I'm hoping I can just stick with over-the-counter stuff to go along with it. Um, yeah, I think that's oh hold on no no, I have been trying to stay in contact with the other two second career guys with uh, Greg and Christian uh, I've been working weekends so I've had Monday and Tuesday off so I'm able to get to chapel which is great because I absolutely love chapel if you're uh, in New Ulm and you have free time during the week and you want to pop an MLC and go to chapel it's wonderful their their chapel is just it, it's it's an absolutely wonderful thing to do I really really enjoy it um we kind of stopped attending St. Paul's in town here. Uh, it's a big church. And then St. John's, the other Wells Church, is also a big church. And I, I'm not a big church guy. I didn't grow up in big churches. I grew up in small churches. And I just, I don't get anything out of attending St. Paul's. It's just so... It's just too, you're too far removed from everything. I need a small, tight, knit group, I guess. And I just, the big churches, I just, I just feel like a number and I just don't get a lot spiritually out of them. Um, but we did start going out of town to Zion, which is a very small church. It's a far more, just very more closed family kind of church feeling and I, I really really enjoy Zion it's a very nice church uh, it happens to be the church where my uh, fellow second career guy Greg lives he lives in the uh, the parsonage there um, so I get to see you know him on Sundays when I'm not working on Sundays uh, which is always nice him and his family um yeah and I, I, I get a lot more out of that but what else we got going on here? I can't think of anything else. So my next video will probably be after I get some more headway 
what the language is so I can write them out and hopefully some character recognition uh, and so oh, we'll get an update on that and definitely an update on the migraine stuff and how I'm just doing in general um yeah so God bless everybody may the Lord bless you and keep you always uh, thank you for watching and uh, hopefully I'll have some good progress to talk about here keep keep praying because we need it for this and for pretty much everything. <laughs>